Good morning and welcome to worship this morning as we gather with Christians all around the world to celebrate our unity in Christ through the sacrament of communion. As we gather, having just celebrated what has come to be known as Orange Shirt Day, we acknowledge that the land on which St. John sits is rich in history and modern traditions of many First Nations and the Métis. From the Anishinaabe to the Atarwandaran, the Haudenosaunee and the Métis, these lands surrounding the Great Lakes are steeped in Indigenous history and today the North Shore of Lake Ontario is still the home to many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island. We are grateful to worship on this land, cared for by the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation, and we strive to live in reconciliation and in hope. I just want to tell you that I had the worst uh, dream last night. I dreamt that worship began 10 minutes late. I had no sermon ready. Communion was not set up, and the whole 
service was a total disaster. So, so far, so good. But you know, dreams make me a little bit nervous, so beware. If you're joining us uh, from home this morning via live stream, you may want to have a small bit of food and drink ready for communion. A reminder that in your Friday email and in the little um, flyer that's available this morning, you'll see we have a wide variety of events happening at St. John's this fall. Please be sure to sign up as we need to know numbers for all of those events ahead of time. And please share the information with your friends and family. Especially at this time of year, and during the season of creation in the church calendar, we give thanks for the beauty of the world in which we live. Our opening hymn number 226. Let us pray. For the beauty of the changing seasons, the wonder of growth giving way to harvest, the beauty of friendships restored, for the hope and promise of all that is to come, we give you thanks, Creator God. Forgive us when we take the wonder and beauty of your world for granted. Human parents sometimes lose patience, but our heavenly parent has all of the patience in the world to remind us to pause and to give thanks. We are indeed a fortunate people. 
Thanks be to God. So this morning we continue our reading of the signs in John's Gospel. And although this is week two of our looking at the signs, what we read this morning is actually Jesus' first sign from John chapter 2. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to me and to you? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. He said to them, now draw some out and take it to the person in charge of the banquet. So they took it. When the person in charge tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, that person called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first, and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk, but you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs, in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. Through these words, God's voice is heard. Thanks be to God.
The good news is I do have a sermon this morning. Um, my computer has been giving me, giving me issues, so um, nothing is as it used to be on my computer, and I have no idea how long my sermon is this morning because the whole format has changed. So um, I think it may be mercifully short, but I'm just timing it this morning, so I'll know in the future. Let us pray. Gracious God, all around us are signs of your presence, signs of your goodness. And yet, too often we pass them by without noticing. Open our eyes, our ears, our hearts, open our very selves that we might acknowledge your presence in our midst and then share it with others. Amen. So I am not uh, the only minister to have ever admitted that they don't enjoy weddings. I especially am just not one to understand all of the protocols and the money and the time and the energy spent on what seemed to me to be trivial details. But don't worry, I've enjoyed all the weddings I've done in this congregation. (laughs) So personally, I am fortunate that our two family weddings have been relatively free of stress. There were only two things that caused me sleepless nights before our beach wedding this summer, those being the weather and the wine. The weather was entirely understandable. What do you do with 30 guests at the ocean if there are hurricane force winds? And of course, we all now know that can happen on the East Coast. And what if there's not enough wine? It turns out we were right to stress because being an outdoor wedding in the middle of summer the white wine disappeared quickly, very quickly actually, and we were close to running out. The sign we read about today, that of Jesus changing the water into wine, is the first sign in John's Gospel. And I have to say probably the most famous. And while I have tired of all of the jokes over the years. You know, the one about Jesus obviously loving his wine, and the one about Jesus putting his mother in her place when she prods him to save the day, like a typical Jewish mother. I have to say that aside from those jokes, this is still my favorite of all of the signs. Now, there are so many little tidbits of information packed into the story because we all know that's what John does. No, Jesus is not going to heed any direction from his mother because he only takes instruction from God. God is the one who will decide when Jesus' true identity will be revealed. The emphasis on wine, on sustenance, foreshadows the I am statements we'll be looking at later this fall in John's Gospel. I am the bread of life. I am the living vine. In this story, the sign is not revealed to everyone. It's revealed to the disciples. Jesus' handiwork is not something to be flaunted. It is for a specific purpose, so that those who are not sure that they believe will believe. John packs so many symbols into every story he tells. But I also 
simply love this sign because it's so ordinary. Jesus knows the embarrassment the family would suffer if they ran out of wine after such careful planning, because weddings in those days were not just half-day events like they are in our society today. And so he uses a most ordinary event to signal to those around him that he is indeed the one. And again, we'll learn more about what that means when we look at the I am statements. Today, as we gather with Christians throughout the world to share symbols of sustenance around this table, we acknowledge that we, too, are called to care about the basic needs of people in our world. We care about the folk from Afghanistan who will soon arrive in our community, sponsored by our local United Churches. We care deeply about the ongoing devastation in Ukraine and the people who are starting new lives here in our midst, as well as the ones left behind to defend what is rightfully theirs. We care about the horrific treatment of women in many cultures, yes, sometimes even in our own. We care about those in our own country still waiting for power to be restored, and those worse still who have no idea how they will even begin to rebuild what was lost. It's so easy in this season when we celebrate the abundance of our personal harvest to forget that all that we enjoy is not simply a result of our hard work. It is because we are a fortunate people, not blessed by God at the exclusion of those who are not as fortunate but a people who have been born in the right place, at the right time, with all of the love and support that has allowed us to flourish. And so as we gather today, we remember that the harvest is plentiful indeed, but for all to live abundantly. Following the example of Jesus, we must share out of our abundance for the good of all.
Every week, things change just a bit, and we get closer and closer to the good old days. It's so wonderful to see more of our choir members back with us, and they're moving out um, to the steps so that the balance between the piano and the choir is better. It's so wonderful to feel like we're, um, we're progressing. Just a few notes um, before our communion service today. When we refer to bread and wine, out of consideration for those who cannot consume alcohol, in this congregation we serve grape juice. I apologize that I neglected um, to make sure that we had gluten-free wafers today, so they um, uh, may not uh, suit those who have issues with gluten, but just move on and partake of the juice. Once the choir has come forward, and I'm giving all these details because it's been so long, right? I even had trouble remembering how we, uh, we do things. So once the choir has come forward, then um, the rest of you are invited from the balcony and then the back rows forward to come to the front, um, up the aisle, to take a wafer that will be handed to you, and then to take a cup and to drink it, and then deposit it in the basket that will be held for you. And because it's been so long since we've all been together, Lindsay and Lindley and Sarah, right? The Booth family are here to help us serve communion this morning, and it's great again to see people back together. This is an open table. All are welcome, no exceptions. This table does not belong to me, it does not belong to us. It is God who issues the invitation. And so we welcome all who seek to live in the shelter of God's love and grace, living in unity with God and with each other, to be nourished and renewed for the ongoing work of justice, mercy, and peace as we walk humbly with our God. As Christians, we offer not only the gift of our financial resources, but all of our talents and gifts for the good of God's people. Please remain seated for our communion hymn number 468. Let us pray. 
Creator God, we have been reminded over the past few weeks of your goodness as the creator of all that is. In love, you were the life force behind our world and all that is in it. We give you thanks for the beauty and wonder of the world in which we live and for entrusting us to care for it with love and care. As we break bread together, we pray. time, your people have not always been careful with the, in, with the world you entrusted to us. We have misused the resources of our earth for selfish gain. But even when your people turned away from you and from all you gave to them, you always invited them back to your open arms. We thank you for your endless love. And as we drink wine together, we pray. As an ultimate gift of love, you sent your son Jesus to be the way and to show us the way. And we are forever grateful for his reconciling love and grace. As always, when we gather as your people, we ask you to bless this bread and this cup, the wheat and the grape, the farmer and the harvest, the seed and the sower, so that in the sharing of these simple elements in community, we may taste and see your goodness. In all we do and say with our whole being, we praise you, God, creator, redeemer, and sustainer of all life, as we pray. All of this we pray together in the words Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory 
forever and ever. Amen. Jesus Christ, the bread of life. Jesus Christ, the living vine.
Let us pray. Thank you, O Christ, for the feast of life. We are fed by your love. We are strengthened by your life. We are sent forth into this world to live into the visions God has laid on our hearts. We are now commissioned to feed as we have been fed, to forgive as we have been forgiven, and to love as we have been loved. Thanks be to God. Amen. God calls us in from the cares of this world to find renewal and rest, and then sends us out to spread his love and grace in the world. Our closing hymn number 481. For those who haven't been with us um, since we um, started serving coffee again, if you wish to join us following the blessing, there will be coffee served in Lusk Hall. We leave now the comfort of this time together, the sacred space where all cares and concerns can be put aside. We go to spread the love and grace of Jesus Christ in the waiting world knowing that the love of God, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit go with us now and forevermore. <laughs>